out of the blue corner from La Habra, California, representing Checkmat La Habra, El Monstro Elder Cruz. El Monstro Elder Cruz, one and one, and who's number one? makes his return to who's number one here in Oklahoma City. Yeah, Elder Cruz started his WNO career on the prelims and finds himself here tonight in the co-main event against the legendary Rafael Lovato Jr. I expect a lot of stand-up match, a lot of stand-up in this match, and uh, some interesting wrestling exchanges, Ricardo. And out of the red corner, Training right here in Oklahoma City, representing Lovato Jiu-Jitsu, Rafael Lovato Jr. Oklahoma City's own Rafael Lovato Jr., the American legend, makes his return to who's number one. Man, the feeling in here is electric. I'm pretty sure Lovato brought three quarters of the stands showing up for the hometown crowd. And it, I am excited to see him back on the WNO stage, Ricardo. All right, let's take a look at this light heavyweight tail of the tape. Elder Cruz, 29 years old, 5'11", weighed in at 198.6 pounds. Ranked number 12 in the flow grappling rankings. Rafael Lovato Jr., 39 years old, 6'3", 206 pounds, ranked number eight. And we are off. Joining us in the broadcast booth, we have Jake Watson. Jake, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Chase. It's a huge honor to be here. I absolutely love the energy today, and man, what a co-main event that we have right now. Yeah, as expected here. Initial exchanges taking place on the feet. El Monstro, very strong wrestler, and Rafael Lovato, very open about wanting to test himself there. Yeah, when, when I spoke to Rafael originally about competing and who's number one here in Oklahoma, we talked about a list of opponents, and El Monstro was definitely on that list. He wanted one of these matches. He wanted to test himself, as he always does, but he wanted to go against one of these rising athletes, one of these rising stars in who's number one, and El Monstro is just that. El Monstro's got a great wrestling pedigree. Of course, we know he's good gi, he's good no gi, he's good at all. He's got Lucas Lakech in his corner, a guy that's battled with Rafael Lovato many years ago. It is a gigantic test, of course. I mean, Lovato coming into this match has a total record of 123 wins, 54 losses. Huge gap, obviously, in experience. I mean, you saw right there, Lovato's been training. I think he said in the press conference, this is like his 20-year competitive anniversary this weekend. So a lot of experience on the side of Rafael Lovato Jr. Melder Cruz mentioned in the press conference actually as well. He has a low submission rate coming into here, but he is so confident in himself that he boldly predicted that he is going to submit Lovato today. So be on the lookout for some serious aggression on both of these competitors. And I said it in the pre-fight press conference, if he could submit a legend, you essentially be, you know, you be the man to, to beat the man. You got to, what are they? To be the man, <laughs> you, you got to beat the man. <laughs> you got what there, Ricardo. Yeah, I almost got it there. But if you beat a legend, you could become a legend. And to do that on the Who's Number One stage will be legendary for Elder Cruz. Well, Amasa is just a grinder. He doesn't really care about accolades. He just wants to go out and compete as much as he can, rack up those, those wins and losses, but it's all part of the journey. And it's led him down some very interesting paths. He's a uh, brown belt Nogi world champion, brown belt Gi champion, now in the very uh, beginning of his black belt career, fighting on some very important matches, some big stages. So Monstro's doing everything right here, but it, again, this is a serious test against someone like Rafael Lovato Jr. I love that you brought up that point, Chase. He actually, uh, Cruz has wins over Dan Monasoyo, Nicky Rod, Patrick Gaudio. No stranger to that absolute upper echelon of competition. Rafael Lovato, timeless jiu-jitsu, right, Ricardo Amendola? You're a fan of timeless jiu-jitsu yourself, and just being able to see what he's able to do time and time again, no matter what time period it is, he just called really is old. impressive. I'm just, just going to point that out. For I'm the dating thing. him. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm giving him a, a, you know, a little bit of age here, but I admire it. It's experience. Catching strays is Ricardo Amendola over here, but the mat has turned uh, to the mats here. Rafael Lovato pulls guard. Interesting. 
Yeah, it's surprising to me because Lovato looked pretty confident. He shut down Elder Cruz's uh, double leg entry earlier on, and, and it looked like Lovato was just like getting more confidence. But I think he wants to perform. He wants to put on a show for his local Oklahoma uh, you know, fans here. And he's like, let's just play guard. Let's let's see what we got here. I already shut you down standing. Let's see what you could do on the ground. Lovato using those long legs, trying to enter underneath the bottom of the hips. Oh. He's got a leg wrapped here. Does Elder Cruz, or sorry, does Lovato on Elder Cruz, and Elder Cruz escapes right away. Lovato being cornered by Shanju Ribeiro, and Victor Hugo made his way from Austin for this match as well. Victor Hugo actually has uh, fought in the Who's Number One stage in the Gi many moons ago, looking to make his Who's Number One return. No Gi very soon. Quick look at a wrestle up there for Lovato. Cheeky ankle pick near the edge of the mat. And now he's back to, uh, testing himself on the feet. I like the north-south style passing we saw from El Monstro there, but Lovato had a lot of answers. Yeah, he's just got those long limbs. He's able to frame, recover, uh, use those legs to hook underneath El Monstro. El Monstro did not like that, and he got away. El Monstro had said in the press conference yesterday that if Lovato maintained too high of a stance, it could be dangerous. But Lovato, we know that he maintains that stance, and he puts his arms in such a great spot, such a safe spot, always transitioning between tugging on the head, a two-on-one collar tie. He's always staying, staying safe, staying smart. You gotta watch, watch the replay of that press conference because uh, I believe somebody asked El Monstro about his position on Lovato and El Monstro said, if Lovato comes in high, I'm gonna blast him. And if you look at Lovato's face when he says that, yeah, 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 he Lovato. went stone cold. He 100%. did not like that comment. <laughs> Lovato came in very prepared to go the distance. Favor, red. Judges favoring Rafael Lovato Jr. so far. Crowd is loving it. Now that's twice that Elder Cruz has attempted a takedown. Not, he's not really hit them, but you know he picked, he had that double leg entry. He had a single leg entry just now, and Lovato just shut both of those off. Of all the matches, this is going to be the one that ends up on our table. I just no, know it. don't say it. <laughs> no, I believe Lovato, even behind this, even behind this incredibly intense demeanor that he maintains, he's a nice guy. He's not going to land on us over here. I think he'll land on you, Jake Watson. But there it is. Nice oh, double leg entry to the single leg switch. That's Alder Cruz. Oh. And again, Lovato is shucking him off. I'm telling you right now, Lovato is. Oh! Alder oh! Cruz! Wow. My goodness. As Lovato pushes in, Alder Cruz with that brilliant maneuver, hitting the lateral drop. Cruz having a little bit of a smile on his face when he hit that throw as yeah, well. Yeah, he was all, he was grinning. You could tell that meant down. something. That meant something to him. Like, oh, I'm that guy. And that takes the confidence to absorb the forward pressure of Lovato, knowing it's going to set up that throw. Elder showing he has a supreme wrestling skills. Literally before that happened, I was going to say that Lovato is just throwing Elder off of his game, and then he hits that beautiful lateral throw with authority. We've never seen that at Who's Number One before, but Elder Cruz did it to the legend Lovato. You hear Lucas Leitch telling Elder, watch out for the Kimura, watch out for the Kimura. So Elder knows what Lovato's going to try. Lovato trying to get underneath the leg there, but Elder is uh, fending him off. You know, with the, with the younger competitor, especially if the new generation of Black was oh. coming in, they might think that it's a little nerve-wracking to fight a legend like Lovato, but Elder Cruz defending, keeping his hips back. Definitely grappling like a seasoned vet out there, Elder Cruz. And the crowd is coming alive for Rafael Lovato Jr. Lovato getting aggressive, trying to get that snatch single leg there. Heavy on the callers. He's definitely going to watch his entries to not get hit with that lateral throw. Trying to underhook here. That's one of those techniques that even if nothing really bad comes oh, of it. Nice oh, foot sweep. big foot sweep. Even if nothing comes of a position like that, it still puts something in the head of Hoffer Lovato. He has to change his game plan for the rest of the match in response to a throw like that. A little bit of blood there opening up on Lovato's bridge of nose, it looks like. 
former Bellator middleweight champ. No stranger to some blood as he defends his takedown. Nice single leg by Elder Cruz. Dumps Lovato down. Lovato has a little chin strap trying to recover, trying to not allow Elder to get to the back. Lovato does a great job of entering into the butterfly guard position. The Oklahoma crowd cheering Lovato, Lovato. We got a war on our hands, Jake Watson. That might be the first time we've actually heard the last name chanted of a who's number one competitor. I don't think I've, I remember hearing a chant from the crowd for a competitor, but I absolutely love it. Elder Cruz putting on a wrestling display here. Yeah, strong takedowns from Elder Cruz, no surprise. But now he's in the close guard of Rafael Lovato Jr. Very dangerous place to be. Lovato knows he's definitely behind. He's trailing a little bit here. Let's see what he does. There's definitely still plenty of time, but in the who's number one rule set, if Lovato's able to put up a heavy effort and a lot of action, then he could win back the judges' favor here with two minutes and nine seconds until we get the next signal. But he would need a serious submission attempt, I think, to win that back at this point. I agree. But he's in the right place for it. Lovato does come into this match with a 52% submission rate across all of his career matches, so... We'll see if he pulls one of those out, tries to add to that statistic. You see Lovato angling left to right, left to oh, right. Oh, oh, shoots the triangle. Oh, there it is. Like a jump scare, throwing his legs up. <laughs> By Elder Cruz now, oh, Lovato does a great job getting back in the close guard. That's the risk when you open up for a shooting triangle like that is maybe you get stacked, but Lovato right back to where he wants to be at this point. And it's so simple, it's a, it's a push-pull triangle. Nothing fancy that you've never seen before. Here we go, shoulder crunch. Looking, Lovato looking to get that right leg underneath. Oh, looking that to looks reverse. Like a... Works through the close guard, and Elder Cruz slips right out. This is the activity Rafael Lovato needs, though, to continually put the votes of the judges back in his favor. If he keeps active like this, and Elder Cruz is unable to mitigate this close guard, then these add up. Here we go! Nice He's chasing sweep. the back. He's chasing the back now. Oh my goodness! Oh no, Lovato's trying to run it again! Lovato has the choke. He's on his left. His longest oh, right. That's it! it. Yeah. Rafael Lovato Jr. Rafael Lovato gets the rear naked choke. Oklahoma City is on their feet. The bridge town is going wild here in Oklahoma City with that win. Lovato, beautiful job. He had the arm trapped. He had the other arm around the neck. He got the rear naked choke. What a way, what a win. Beautiful job by Rafael Lovato oh. Jr. Man, that was incredible. All right, let's see the replay. That's this a, is that is a top three. Maybe the best ever W no submission I've been seeing. Yeah. In the spur of a moment, Rafael Lovato Jr. I can't even say his name. Rafael Lovato Jr. finds his moment and finishes the match. Ricardo Medoy, I'm excited. This is incredible. Timeless jujitsu. And your winner is by submission. Out of the red corner, Rafael Lovato Jr. The legend, the American legend, Rafael Lovato Jr. How special must this win be for him? His hometown crowd, he's always fighting away from him. He was in Brazil two weeks ago, fighting in the Brasileiros, and he just submitted Elder Cruz in Bridgetown in Oklahoma City. Let's kick it back to Kendall Rusing with a word in our Winner here, Lovato. The man of the hour, Rafael Lovato Jr. here winning. It's gotta be a pretty special moment here, winning at this pro show in your hometown with all your students, affiliates, uh, teammates here from other places. Talk us through just a little bit about what's going on in your mind at this moment. Yeah. <clears throat> It's a special day for sure, but before I say anything about that, look, Mother's Day was a few days ago, and I got my super mom wife over there with our twin babies at home, and she supports me while I do all this crazy stuff, train all day, every day, camp after camp. This one's for you, baby, all right? Uh, that being said, 
man, this one is really special, you know? Like, I know it's not a world title or for the belt or anything, but 30 years ago this year, my father started our school. He started our dream. And, you know, back then we had nothing. Like, there was nothing here. We started from scratch. We lived in that academy for a while. And after all this years of hard work, blood, sweat, and tears, grind, you know, the ups and downs, here we are today. And I never imagined that it would come this far. And uh, it just means so much to me to have this show here um, in my town with my students, my family, everyone I love the most. I never left. I never left. This was always home. 98% of all my training was done right here with these people. Oklahoma is the home of great people who worked their asses off, and we did it. Here we are today. Thank you, Flo. Thank you, Flo, for bringing this here. Thank you. Let's do it again. <laughs> so, of course, I've got to award you your Tezcoin submission bonus, so you can take that here, extra cash. And I want to ask you now, we talked a little bit about yesterday about retirement. You haven't been doing the retirement thing all that well just yet, right? We're here. Not that I'm complaining. We love having you on the mats. But as exciting as that is, is there anything else that we can look to see or what is in the future of Rafael Lovato Jr. outside of just Oklahoma City? Uh, the fire's still burning. You know, I got all my students still working hard for their goals and dreams. Victor Felipe going for worlds, going for world titles, making their history. And so, man, if I'm getting beat up by these guys all the time, you know, I might as well, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm still here. Keep the opportunities coming. And, you know, I'll just go ahead and throw it out there. Uh, I, he's already been called out once tonight, but you guys got me down to 205 for this. And uh, I'm not getting any younger, so I would like a crack of that 205 belt. Much respect to Pedro. He's a warrior. He's holding two belts, so he's getting called out multiple divisions. But Isaac's 24. I'm turning 40 in a few weeks, so I think I deserve it first, all right? Let's go. All right. Congratulations again, Lovato. Thank you all for coming out to support your team and your sensei here. And we'll be back in just a minute for our final event of the evening. This Tezos Who's Number One is brought to you by Tezos, the energy efficient blockchain and official partner of Flow Sports. Tezos, designed to evolve, built to empower. Visit Tezos.com to learn more. And this event is presented by Fat Tire, a beer made with climate solutions and land and water conservation in mind. You can join the conversation with other Jiu-Jitsu fans on our Flow Grappling Discord. Become a part of the community by scanning the QR code on your screen. All right, guys, you know what time of year it is. The IBJJF World Championships are just weeks away. We're hitting the road. We're going on the road to Worlds. Here's the trailer. Can't wait for you to see it. What's up, grappling fans? The road to Worlds is back. This year for Road to Worlds, we're going bigger, we're going better than ever before. East Coast, West Coast, International, if there's good jujitsu, we'll be there and we'll be bringing you guys the best content you could want, all of the best blogs, all access, interviews, training rounds, you name it, we're gonna have it. All right, here in the Amazon. All right, get ready. We'll be in Brazil, the Southwest, California, the East Coast, we're visiting as many academies as we can until we end up inside the Walton Pyramid. The first episode goes live May 19th. All roads end at the Walter Pyramid for the IBJJF World Championship, but until then, you guys sit back, relax, grab your popcorn, and enjoy the road to Worlds. Four. One, two, three. Power! Boys, please, One, two, three. Check it out!